I'm here at the Golden State Star Party to conduct one final round of field testing of this Ampertime 100 amp hour battery. Now I've been testing this battery both at home and out in the field for the last few months. And in this video, I'm gonna go over the test results and give you my overall assessment of this particular battery and how it performs as a power supply for our astronomy equipment, especially when we're away from home. Before I go over my test results, let's talk about some basics of this battery. So the Ampertime battery is made in China, but they do have warehouses in the US so they can ship it to you fairly quickly after you order. This battery, this 100 amp hour battery, retails for $400. The price does fluctuate from time to time, but that's the price right now. Now Ampertime does make a range of batteries. They make 400 amp hours. Uh, down batteries with less than 100 amp hours. So if you need more or less capacity, you can look at those batteries that they offer as well. Now it comes in a ABS plastic case and it's sealed and it has the terminals on top. So it looks very much like a lead acid battery, but it's a lithium battery. And to be specific, this is lithium iron phosphate, which is typical in these battery uh, replacements using lithium. Now the dimensions of this are 13 inches by 6.8 by 8.4. So this is very similar size to a lead acid battery, but it is only 24 and a quarter pounds. So it's less than half the weight of a typical lead acid battery. Comes with a five year warranty, but it's expected to last for 10 years. And the manufacturer specs it for more than 4,000 full discharge cycles. And a full discharge cycle means you can use all 100 amp hours. It comes with a carry strap. It does not come with these wires. I put these on um, so it can make it convenient to hook to my astronomy equipment. You can attach whatever you need to it. Now, like all lithium batteries, this one has a battery management system inside which is electronic circuitry. It's the brains in pretty much every lithium battery. If you find a lithium battery that doesn't have a BMS, I would avoid that. So the BMS is to, there to make sure the battery is operated in a safe condition and it gets the longest life possible. So it has disconnect for short circuits, for overcharge, over discharge, and over current. So it will help you in those cases to protect the cells inside and protect the battery overall. The battery management system also does cell balancing. And that means it'll make sure that the individual cells inside this battery are, none of those cells are discharged more than the other cells or charged more than the other cells. So it kind of balances them out. And the battery management system will shut down the output once it reaches the uh, minimum safe voltage on those cells so as not to damage the cells. That's a big difference with lead acid versus lithium batteries. So in a lead acid battery, there's nothing to stop you from discharging that battery below 50 or even 60%, which is around 12.06 volts. You can keep pulling juice out of that and start to damage the internal cells. In this case, the battery management system will shut you down and the output will go to zero. Now let's talk about the uh, operating temperatures. For charging, you must be above 32 degrees Fahrenheit and you can charge all the way up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a higher temperature than I expect to be charging this battery in, in my use cases. And that's zero degrees C to 44 degrees C. And for discharging, you can discharge this battery down to minus four degrees Fahrenheit up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's minus 20 C to 60 degrees C. One thing that's missing in this 100 amp hour battery from Amper Time that I wish they had is a temperature sensor connected to the battery management system. And a lot of the lithium batteries out there will have that temperature sensor. So the BMS knows that the temperature is below 32 degrees and will not allow you to charge it. So just make sure since it doesn't have that, that you don't try to charge it below 20, 32 degrees Fahrenheit because you will cause damage to the insert, internal cells. So the other thing about this battery, because it's made in China and they just have warehouses in the US, but not technical support, what do you do if you need quick technical support? So just as a test, 
I sent an email to their uh, tech support center on one afternoon and I posed a hypothetical problem with the battery. Of course, there was no problem with the battery, but I pretended that there was a battery problem. And later that evening, when it's the next day in China, I got an email back that same day, my time, telling me the answer to my question. So I was impressed with how quickly they did answer my question. And their answer was uh, very thorough, complete, and was spot on to the problem that I posed. Okay, so next we'll talk about the different tests that I performed on this and how the battery performed during those tests. There are four basic tests that I perform on a battery like this. First, I do a full discharge test to make sure that the capacity meets the manufacturer's ratings. I start with a fully charged battery and completely discharge it until the battery management system shuts it down. And then I record the number of amp hours and watt hours that I get out of the battery. And I will typically do that three times just to make sure the data is accurate. The second test is an AC charge test, where of course we're gonna use a charger designed for a lithium battery and take a fully depleted battery and see how long it takes to recharge it with the AC charger. The third test is a solar panel charge test. And in that case, because this is 100 amp hours, I will typically use two 100 watt solar panels and then I need a solar charge controller between the two and see how long it takes on a very sunny day to recharge the battery. And the fourth and final test, which is the important one for us astronomers, is I will take this out into the field like I showed you before and power my astronomy equipment for several nights under the stars and knowing how much power my equipment requires, find out how long I can run with this 100 amp hour battery without recharging it when I'm away from home. The first test I want to perform with this battery is a full discharge test. And actually I'll repeat this test at least two more times for a total of three times. And we can look at what the average total capacity is. So the, since the battery is shipped according to the instructions that came with it at about 30% to 50% state of charge, I fully recharged it overnight and it's been sitting for a while. So the next thing is, since it comes with these nice little terminals, but no cables, I made my own cable. And so I made cables with lugs on one end and my favorite Anderson power pole connectors on the other end. You need to select the gauge wire that is appropriate for you, your use. In my case, these are very short connections and my astronomy equipment will only be using about five to nine amps maximum. So I'm using 12 gauge wire, which is more than sufficient. So we'll hook this up to the terminals and be ready to do the discharge. I want to make sure these are on there tight and then we can connect to my dummy load. I'm going to run this at 5 amps and at 5 amps this is around 67 watts. So most astronomy setups would be 5 amps or less and if you've seen some of the other reviews you know that I have also run some batteries at around nine amps, and there really is no difference in the capacities measured between nine amps, draw, or five amps. It, that's too small of a current to make a difference for these batteries. So at five amps, 100 amp hours, it'll take about 20 hours. We'll keep an eye on this, and I will also record the voltage of the battery uh, as a function of capacity and that way we can look at the voltage roll-off curve for this particular battery. With a load applied the voltage will drop down from 13.9 to between 12.9 and 13 volts fairly quickly within a minute or so and that's to be expected. As we can see the battery is now fully discharged it supplied 103.24 amp hours, 1,314 watt hours, and it took 20 hours and 8 minutes to fully discharge. Now, while that's more than the 100 amp hours 
specified, which is a good thing. What's most important is how long the battery was able to maintain a voltage of 12 volts or higher. And so I collected that data while this battery was discharging, and we can take a look at that here. So here is the voltage discharge curve for the Amper Time 100 amp hour battery. The first thing to note is that it starts at 12.8 volts, which is typical of lithium iron phosphate. And also the discharge curve is rather shallow. The voltage doesn't drop very fast like it does on a lead acid battery, which makes it difficult to tell what, your, what capacity is left in the battery simply by measuring the voltage. But as you get closer to 100% depth of discharge, you see the curve begins to drop rather rapidly. And in fact, this battery drops below 12.0 volts at 96% depth of discharge. So you can get almost 100% of the battery capacity at 12 volts and above. Now that this battery is fully discharged and is sitting at a 0% state of charge, we want to see how long does it take to fully recharge it using an AC power supply. And you want to make sure you use an AC charger that's designed for lithium batteries. It will have the charge profile that's appropriate for lithium batteries and a voltage which is about 14.2 to 14.6 volts to fully recharge the lithium battery. In this case I'm using a 10 amp charger from BioAno Power. They also have 15 and 20 amp chargers. I'll put links to those. You can also find a lot of chargers online as well that will work just as well. So this charger conveniently for me has Anderson power pole connectors on the end which will mate up with Anderson power pole connectors that I made for the uh, cables for this battery. If you have other connectors obviously you will have to get the appropriate adapters to connect the two. So first connect the battery to the charger then plug the charger in and then you can hear the fan on the charger. I'm going to set it on its side so these get warm. It doesn't get real hot because it's only 10 amps. That way it can uh, radiate heat through the casing a little better. Now at 10 amps we would expect this to take about 10 hours to fully recharge. So that's what we're going to see. Does it actually take 10 hours? Obviously, if you use the 20 amp charger, it would take half that time. So let's let it run and we'll come back. So the charger has shut off automatically, indicating that the battery is now fully charged. And it took 10 and a half hours exactly. So that's pretty much in line with what we expected. To charge any battery with a solar panel, whether it's lead acid or lithium, you need a solar panel or panels, of course, and then you need a solar charge controller like the one I have here. And when you're charging a lithium battery, you want to set the charge profile on the charge controller to lithium. And that's not really hard to do. The instructions that come with the charge controller will tell you how to do that. So you basically hook the solar charge controller to the battery first, and then solar panels to the solar charge controller. And since I have two solar panels, I have a, a cable here that will take the outputs of both solar panels and combine them. And so with these two 100 watt solar panels and good sun, I'll get about 5.5 amps, total of 11 amps. And so it takes about 10 hours to 11 hours, depending on how much sun you have, whether you have any clouds or not to fully recharge this from a discharge state. Now you may not have uh, two 100 watt panels and you may not have 11 hours of sunshine, but I was able to get to 84% of capacity in just eight hours. So you can certainly top this off with one or two solar panels in, um, in a day if you start early and you run until the sun gets low in the sky. Now in the all important field tests, the equipment and power consumption will vary depending on the situation, uh, the equipment I'm using and what I'm trying to do. And your equipment will be different, but let's use mine as an example and then you can estimate how long this battery will last for you. So I'm using a software BISC Mighty Mount, 
with an ASI 1600 uncooled camera, an ASI guider, Celestron motor focuser, and I have a C11, and when I need uh, dew control, I use the dew heater, and that's a fairly big power draw itself. I use a B-Link mini PC to run the SkyX and do my imaging for me and control the telescope. Uh, I use a GLI net uh, portable router so I can connect to the B-Link with my laptop and a Pegasus PowerBox Advance to distribute power to all the equipment. That total load is about 52 watts, and I was able to run for 15 hours over two nights. So that used about 60 amp hours, or 60% of the battery capacity, and which is also 784 watt hours, if you like to work in watt hours. That means I had 40% of the capacity of the battery remaining after those two nights, which means I could have used the setup for a total of 25 hours before I needed to recharge the battery. Of course, you can always partially recharge or fully recharge during the day, but the purpose of this test is to see how long you can go without having to recharge. Now let's say your setup is different than mine, which I'm sure it is, and you're using 30 watts or less. Given how long this battery will last uh, on my situation, for you, you should expect to go at least 40 hours if you're running at 30 watts. And let's suppose you have a very power hungry PC and dew straps and uh, cooled camera and so forth. Maybe you're running as high as 80 watts. In that case, you would expect to get about 16 hours out of this battery before you need to recharge. Overall, I've been pleased with how this performed in the field. I didn't really have any question going in that it would supply the power I need. The question was how long would it last and would it live up to the expectation of providing 100 amp hours of total capacity night after night. So based on my results that I shared with you, I can recommend the 100 amp hour battery from AmperTime if you're looking for one of the less expensive lithium iron phosphate batteries out there on the market to run your astronomy equipment. I hope you learned something useful from this video. I would appreciate it if you hit the like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can find links to all of the equipment that I've mentioned if you look down below the video on this channel. You can also find more things about astronomy, astronomy equipment, and techniques on my website, californiaskies.com. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next time.